Earlier today we talked about compassion a bit and uh, we'd like to uh, encourage you once again that, uh, to be a part of it, to be a part of a miracle, to be a part of an answered prayer. Sometimes uh, we're not sure what to do because you know, life gets pretty complicated. In the course of the weekend, like a lot of you were asking questions, I didn't know how to answer for you. I don't know anyone who has all the answers in the world, but I do know a lot of people who have the ability to sustain the life of at least one child. And I'll tell you what, I just have this feeling like um, life is more important than answers. And that Christ was more interested in a child than he was in, in a lot of uh, right things to say. And it's a great joy to be a part of the love of Christ. To be a part of uh, making that love visible. So there's a compassion sign-up sheet out there and if you want you can uh, go ahead and sign up tonight and uh, Compassion will send you some information about kids who are on the waiting list and uh, there's no financial obligation when you sign up. It will just uh, get you the information faster. So I'd like to encourage you to uh, think about that. We're going to do another song with you. A song that you have to sing because uh, there's not a lot of point in doing this song if you don't sing it. When Beaker first wrote the chorus to this in that room at down in Midland, Texas, we, uh, he had just written it, and about 45 minutes later, we were playing it with a bunch of kids in this conference, and when I heard them singing it, I went, wow, that's a great song. And uh, it's the song, kind of song we can sing together. Those are about the best kind of songs there are, I think. So... Uh, Maybe you don't know all the uh, verses. I obviously don't know all the verses of these songs either. I don't know. You know, here, I don't know what you do up here in northern Indiana. I know where I came from. On Friday nights, we used to, uh, you know, we'd get in our dad's trucks because they used to build those trucks so that you could run over anything and it wouldn't hurt them. <laughs> and, uh, you know, the old gravel roads, they were, they just ran straight for miles and miles and miles. You never had to turn your car because you were always going in one direction until you wanted to, to go another direction and then you had to wait till you came to the road to make a turn and then you'd make the turn and you'd go straight in that direction for a long way it was pretty easy driving so what we always like to do is we always like to go as far out in the country as we could get to where there weren't any houses or anything that we could find and then you'd, you'd go just about as fast as you dared go and then you'd turn the lights out <laughs> and the truck in the middle of the night it wasn't a real smart thing to do. <laughs> but luckily they built those trucks real sturdily. And our dads always just thought that they were getting beat up out in the field. They didn't know it was in someone else's field. <laughs> so one time I was driving from, um, from Philadelphia. I had to drive down to Miami, Florida, from Philadelphia. And I was going down, I think it's Center State 95 through Maryland, which I don't ordinarily think of as being a beautiful part of the world, you know. But uh, it's shocking how beautiful Maryland is. Of course, it was about 2 o'clock in the morning, and it was a full moon, and so just about any place is pretty at 2 in the morning with a full moon if you're all by yourself. And I started thinking about how we used to do that when we were kids, how we used to turn those lights out and drive a little bit too fast on gravel roads. And I wondered if I could still see by moonlight like I could when I was younger. So I looked around to make sure there weren't any cars. <laughs> and uh, 
clicked them off right there in Maryland. Only this time I didn't drive too fast because I wasn't quite so young anymore and I had gotten in the habit of trying to soak up things instead of speed by them. Looking at Maryland, I began to think of uh, just the goodness that I was not blind. Sometimes you have to go to Maryland to remember what a joy it is to see. But then I began to think about even if I was in the middle of Brooklyn with that moon, if there was a power shortage and there weren't any lights to interrupt, probably even Brooklyn would be pretty with that moon. I remembered how it used to look when you'd drive in the spring and the corn was just starting to come up and the rows were real short. You know, sometimes we think that everything is changing, but I'll tell you what, the same moon is up there tonight. The same stars that Abraham saw, they're all up there. And the same God that put them there and made them shine, he's still there too. And I don't know what life has for you. I don't know what life has for me. But I know this. I know that God is good. And I know that God does not lie. And I know that God has given us the gift of our lives. Sometimes we wish he would have given us someone else's life. But he chose to give you your life. Don't despair of it. You're going to have needs in your life and God is going to meet those needs His way and in His time. We don't need to judge God's way of doing stuff. It gets done. I hope you know that. I hope you trust Him. I hope you experience him in every moment of your life. Because apart from him, there's really not a lot of point in living. And if you know this song, then you can sing it with us. If you know the verses, that'll help me out. And if you don't know the verses, if you know the chorus, join in the chorus. The chorus isn't really a song, it's really a prayer. And I don't know if you remember how we were talking about when I was a kid, and I'd go to Sunday school. And my aunt, who was my Sunday school teacher, would teach us to sing into my heart, into my heart, come into my heart, Lord Jesus, come in today, come in to stay. Lord Jesus and how we'd sing it and how we didn't really know what it meant but how God knew what it meant sometimes we don't know where God's going to lead us but God already knows it's not our job to worry about that it's just our job to follow maybe you have never prayed before maybe you don't know how to do it it's not all that hard and maybe till you learn how to just feel free enough to tell God what's on your mind, maybe you can pray this chorus. And maybe you can't believe it completely tonight. Well, God believes it already. And God will answer your prayers according to his understanding and not according to yours. So uh, maybe this is a starting place for you. Maybe you've been going a long time. Maybe you're real tired like me. Maybe this will be an encouragement to you. Whatever it is, sing it with us. Because I think the best kinds of songs we do in the Christian church are when we sing together. Sometimes the night was beautiful. 
Sometimes the sky was so far away Sometimes it seemed to stoop so close You could touch it but your heart would break Sometimes the morning came too soon Sometimes the day could be so hot and There was so much work left to do But so much you'd already done Oh God my God, and I will ever praise you. Oh God, you are my God, and I will ever praise you, and I will seek you in the morning, and I will learn to walk in your way, days and step by step. Sometimes I think of Abraham How one star he saw had been lit just for me He was a stranger in this land And we are that no less than he And on this road to righteousness Sometimes the climb can be so God, and I will ever praise you, and I will seek you in the morning, will learn to walk in your ways, and step by step you'll lead me, and I will follow you all of my days, and I will follow you all of my days. Follow